the polyhedra project. So, um, in like 2013, I had access to a laser cutter for like the first time in my life. I was very excited about the laser cutter and I did a lot of projects with it. And, um, I was looking for like gift ideas and I found this one thing. It was, um, it's called Pelago. And it's like a game that was invented by this Australian mathematician and I had kind of been thinking about Settlers of Catan and other games that involve hexagons and like assembly and magnets. So I was thinking like two dimensional hexagons and you put magnets in the side and they assemble and then I kind of, I made one or two but it wasn't, it was very derivative, it wasn't very interesting work. So I thought, okay wouldn't it be fun to do uh, 3D shapes and I looked at some online and they had different styles but I, I wanted something kind of different than what I saw. I wanted a, a 3D printed tile where every tile was the same, like every tile was the same and had magnets in the edges and it could go anywhere in the shape. And um, initially I was looking for shapes that just had one type of shape, uh, not two types of faces, and then I kind of branched out, been doing different things. So this, if I can remember, this is a pentagonal uh, like cosatetrahedron. I also made a pentagonal hexacontahedron. So the difference is that hexacontahedron had 60 faces. And let's find out how many faces this one has. So one set of four, two sets of four, three sets of four, four sets of four, five sets of four, six sets of four, 24. And I got this, I forgot how to do it, all right. So one of these magnets is assembled incorrectly because it popped out and was glued in backwards, but that's okay. And one of the nice, the nicest thing about this, right, with the magnets, and I didn't even realize this when I built it, but somebody else 3D printed my model and then tried to glue it together, is that the offsets, all like the errors that happen, like in the manufacture of these 3D printed tiles, uh, they just kind of distribute all over the shape. So you don't need to worry because if you were to glue this, you would because have to worry. Because they're magnets, right? Yeah, it, 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 because everything's kind of flexible. Yeah. If you glued it, then as you went, you would have these larger offsets accumulating until that nothing would close anymore and it wouldn't work. Um, so first I started with like a, a, mostly things I'd taken from this Wikipedia page about the Catalan solids, which are, we talked about this previously briefly, but the, the dual to the Archimedean solids. And I was just going into Wikipedia and I would find information. I usually find like the angles on the shapes and I would just put that into OpenSCAD and just make that tile. But it didn't feel very like correct, right? Because I'm like, what if the, the number on the Wikipedia page was wrong and I didn't calculate it myself? Really should calculate these shapes, like the way they should be derived mathematically from whatever, right? Whatever, however you want to start. But there's, there's a couple different ways to think about it. You could take a primitive and apply operations. You could take shapes or points and, and move them along parametric, you know, rules. Um, but other shapes I made, so let's see. I made a whole script of parametric dodecahedra, so 12-sided shapes, where these are all pentagons that can have um, different, they're not regular pentagons, they can be regular pentagons, but you are, these actually are both dodecahedral shapes off of the same script. This one's a lot closer to a cube because in the extreme case, if you take this pair of uh, vertices and, and kind of squeeze them inward, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get closer and closer to having what this over here. And, and at the extreme, they get, let's see, at, the, at one extreme, this goes further and it becomes a cube. And the other extreme, this becomes a point and this only, only has four sides. And I forget what that looks like in my head. But um, whenever I had an issue where, you know, having only one magnet meant that there could be ambiguity about which way the shape went in, you just add two magnets. Whenever you have a shape like a triangle and each ver each edge could go to a diff the wrong edge if, if you had only one magnet in the center of every edge, well you just put two edges, sorry, two magnets in that edge, now you don't have that ambiguity. And then, uh, that's an awful explanation. So then I was like, well let's make the hardest shape I could think of that was kind of satisfying, let's go for the rhombic eneocontahedron, it's got two different types of rhombi in it, and there's a slim rhombus and a broad rhombus. And here's where I ran into the problem that Wikipedia like didn't have any of the information I wanted. It didn't have like the nice little, you know, I could copy paste the angles. I had to actually, you know, think about how to derive the shape and, and some, you know, I guess online I read more and I was like, okay, I take a icosahedron and then I truncate the icosahedron, and then I do the join on the truncation of the icosahedron, but then I had to understand what does it mean to do all those operations. I had to like, and I actually kind of, in, 
I didn't know what the operations were defined by, but there was like a little link on Wikipedia with a picture, and it was very difficult to understand at first, but after looking at the picture and making some assumptions and thinking about it, I was like, just like really intuiting based off the word and the picture what that operation was supposed to be. I couldn't like find a good textbook that was like, here is a rigorous mathematical description of what this operation is. I was just like looking at what it did to a cube and how it was described in the literature in like three sentences and then doing the operations. And then, um, three minutes. all right, this has 90 faces. It has 60 of one type, 30 of the other. And the fun part about some of these is that they kind of crack like an egg. Whoa. But for other ones, they just kind of shatter and break. And then everyone has to pick the parts off of the floor. This one has enough magnets per, like, the the, mag the total, of, like, all the forces on the edges compared to the, the volume of the shape and the weight of the shape are such that you can kind of give it a crack and it opens like an egg. But this one's, like, notorious for just, well, I'm good at it now. But, like, falling <laughs> apart all over the floor and having everyone just, like, you know, scrambling to pick them up. But the nice part is that it's very easy to quickly assemble them and verify that you didn't lose any parts. And if you did lose a part, you can just 3D print another one. Um, and this is also just an annoying exercise in how to use super glue properly and not get it all over all of the wrong things. Because, uh, yeah, if you ever want to try magneting, super gluing in like 90 times, each one of these has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight times 90 magnets into plastic, <laughs> like just, yeah, it's awful. Um, and, and there should be a machine, a machine to do it for, mm -hmm. <laughs> for someone. All right, that's it, that's all I gotta say. Do the egg thing again. The egg thing? Okay, one more time. Give it a little crack. Whoa. I can't do this when I cook, by the way. I get <laughs> like shards of shell everywhere. All right. Um, you know, these were all run through this, there's this website, which Sean can edit into the video, um, that lets you run uh, Conway operators on, on shapes and then you can just create really complicated ones. And you can make it so bad your computer crashes because it's like too much, too many faces to hold in memory. Yeah, I forget what these are. I, I was gonna write them on it, but it was hard to find a place to write it, so I forgot. That breakable and reattachable egg is really cool. It, yeah. We should put something in it and then have people like, break it and see what's inside you can properly. 3d print your own i give you uh, the files are public domain oh i made oh. them public domain because i was how many eggs could you fit in there that's a good question <sighs> i don't know but the point about public domain is is y in any point in the future you may become greedy and want to make money off of your project but right now you think i have ideals and i want to share so share now and commit to the public domain you can never take it back and prevent your future self from being greedy right like let's say this is popular and the toy maker wants to make it and he says do you have the copyright i go Oops, past me wanted to be like sharing and open and open source, and so they committed it to public domain. Current me might change their mind, but I can't legally. That's why. Will that's... this overwrite? No. So it says zero minutes, it's just gonna end? Yeah, it's just end. Got it. It'll be good fitting into the video. They talk about the end of the video so meta.